Hi, welcome to my live. I have four different A size transfers that we're working with today. We also will be working with some picture frames. We have five by seven picture frames we're using that I bought at the store and put plain white cardstock inside of them facing out so that we could chalk right on the glass of the picture frame. I did one similar yesterday on my live, but this one's different because it has animals and it's more kid oriented. So that should, and we're doing a different kind of chalking technique tonight with this too, which I will show you how to do step by step. Okay, I think we are up and running. Okay, so I have four different picture frames that I've replaced the image with white contact or white um, cardstock. These will hang either landscape or portrait, and there's a little hook on the back. So just while we're talking, I need to be observant so that I don't accidentally do it upside down. So let me set these to the side. We'll pull one out for now. I'll set these other ones to the side. Something went wrong. We're having trouble playing this video. Oh, what went wrong? It looks like I'm live still. wonder what that's all about. I don't know. All right, well, if anybody has any issues seeing me, just message me. Okay, so I have Be Brave and Strong. I have Stand Tall, Wild Blue Yonder, and Roam Where You Want To. Okay, we're going to start with Be Brave and Strong. seeing me okay Andy on there yeah. okay I don't know why I had that glitch okay so here we have first one and we need to mark which one it is be brave because once I am done with this project I'm these the backings of these are all going to be the same size so if I just mark them now, I think we're good. All right, so the next step is fuzzing the transfer. So I have my fuzz cloth here. The object of this is to pick up some lint because we're working on glass and a brand new transfer like this one is. We need lint on the back of it so it doesn't stick too good. We want it to stick, but not too good is we don't want it to ruin our transfer, the adhesive on the back. We don't want it to stick, basically. Okay, looks pretty good. I got a bunch of chalk paste on there. Okay, so there's our hook. We're turning it this way. Let's 
this just a little bit. I'm not gonna press down on the whole thing. I just wanna make sure the area that's white where my chalk paste is gonna lay is good. Okay, now I've got a couple chalk paste colors to use on my male lion here. that picture did not show up. Oh, all right, let me find it again. Um, okay, now it's kind of going to be there's a little bit of brown in him. We're going to do like a swirling color combination. I wanted to put a little orange around his mane. And mostly he's the sandy and brown color. So we're going to put a little bit of chalk paste because we're going to do a little technique with this. All right, and then a little bit of this color. Okay, if that's enough try doing a little bit of a swirl motion. If I have enough chalk paste here, we're just going to go in a circular motion, kind of mixing that all together. And then pulling the rest of it all in. sure we're covering the whole area. A little bit of this lighter color in the face. Well that, I know that doesn't look like much, but when we peel it, you'll see. Hopefully this turned out as pretty as it looks on the outside. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, really cool. All right, so let me tell, tell you real quick what colors I used. So the brown is bark. So we used bark. Now what I was doing, what I, the whole attempt here was to use the fawn in the tail and leg area. So I, I put little dots of the chalk paste around there. Then I took some orange peel and I dotted that around the mane and chest area where all the extra fur is. And then I dotted brown on the inside of the orange and a couple dots in the center. And then in a circular motion, I stirred up and mixed in that mane, not all the way, but just in a circular motion to get that burst of color right there. So those three colors, that's our final result of our first picture. Now that one, I'm going to stick to the side. We're going to dry that. We're going to move on to the next one. Okay, the next one is roam where you want to. And this one is um, also kind of like a, if you want to go with like realistic colors, like I did for the lion. So the buffalo is lots of browns. It's got a little bit of the tan color in it. So we're going to grab one of our frames. Make sure, because it's got to go width wise, make sure our little hanger's right there. So we're flipping it over so that we have the right side. 
All right. The buffalo. I forgot to write on the back of it. Fuzz him really good. Okay, so the buffalo is a it's got a lot of dark brown in it, but there are some kind of medium toned and a little bit of I would even say a little bit of black as well. So we're going to try to emulate that on our frame. Bison, buffalo, same thing, right? Just make sure everything's stuck down around the edges of your silk screen. Everywhere where it's touching so that you have it's a nice seal on it. Okay, so I need to grab some black. Let's see, I just need some water. Okay, now the horns here on the buffalo are going to show up white, but this other brown area for the rest of him is real dark. Down by his hooves and his face, they're very dark brown. So I'm going to dot some brown around here add a little bit more to other areas where we're going to swirl this together. But up near the head, we're going to add some dabs of black to mix in. And then down by the hooves, we're going to add a little bit of this fawn. Okay, let me, excuse me for reaching in front of the camera here. I use the same squeegee. I'm just going to clean it here. Okay, so now we're going to do the swirling motion to try to get this darker brown around the head of the bison. Good as we can. Let's get a little bit more brown in here. There we go. That's pretty good. And then if you need to wipe off some of that before you start swirling in some of this color into the hooves. And start in with the bark color, which is like the base of the body. Make sure you get all the way down to the 
end of the hooves. Okay, so now clean off the squeegee and my mat here, and we'll peel this one. It's ready to go. Okay. Our buffalo. Very nice. I love the way that turned out too. Okay. All right, so let's set that one now off to dry. We're going to pull the next one in. We have. one's called Wild Blue Yonder. Wild Blue Yonder. Okay, so the kind of whale that this is matters what the color is, right? So finding out the right color to match is what you want to do. I've seen people do just whatever color. They just pick some of the colors for the chalk paste, make it kind of just fun. Um, it kind of looks like a sperm whale to me, and the sperm whale is kind of grayish, kind of like a gray. Could put a little blue with it. Um, some black, blue, oh gosh, high gel. What color would you say the sperm whale is? Kind of grayish and black looking. All right, so we have gray, we have black. We could even add a little bit of blue to it just for fun, even though that's not what it has on it. Can you add turquoise? I know, I, I mean, you could. But Are you making a whale? I, I'm making four animals. Okay, so I did the lion. Make it nice and silly and fun. And this one is the buffalo. I actually am making a more realistic than Maybe the buffalo could be wearing a pair of trousers. Oh my gosh. And the whale <laughs> could be wearing some heels. So it's calves. Huh? Oh my gosh. <laughs> funny, Joe, you're funny. Do whales even have? You know what? Yes, they do. It's their babies. Oh. Wow. Their babies are calves. Get yeah. it? Get it? <laughs> you, I think you like invented a new. You know how people have, like dad jokes are a thing. Yeah. Yours is like mom, mom jokes. jokes. Totally. It's really like dry humor. It is totally. <laughs> funny, funny. If if, that, <laughs> if you classify this humor at all. Joe, be nice. I Love your just, mother. I would just classify it as like <laughs> embarrassment. Self-embarrassment. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> if I can't give good mom jokes, what can I do? Alright, so here's our guy. He's ready. I kind of think I'm wanting to do some blue with this. Now I got two. I got bright blue. And I've got a blue that needs stirring with some water in it because that looks, for being one of my new colors, it's not looking too good. Let me see if I can make something out of this. Goodness, I don't even know how it got there. Try it out. Hmm. Well, we're still going to use it. All right, so we can use some of that. And I have this blue too. So I think we could make a concoction of all of these and it would look really cool. 
me just give these a stir. This is why it's nice to have a bunch of stir sticks around so that you can have some fun. All right, so we can do some light blue area, some of the darker blue along the bottom, maybe a little bit in the tail. We can do, if this is going to stir, we can do a little bit of this mixed in. the bottom where it's a little darker some of that okay let's give that a whirl we're gonna do the light first the light area and then let's mix in this darker up to it very colorful See what that looks like. And that's really cool. I like that a lot. Okay, so we added a bunch of colors. So I did Liberty. This one is Forget Me Not. This one is Morning Sky. Then we have, um, um, why are the names? Storm. Storm and then Black Velvet. We added all of those. I kind of did the lighter at the top and at the tip of the tail because I thought, you know, closer to the surface of the water and then this is a little bit darker just as you see them in their natural habitat. They would be darker. Okay, let's get these put away. We're going to work on the next one. I'll set this one aside. Let me see. I got some paste on the frame right there. Let me wipe that off first. Okay. Let's set that one to dry, and then we will pull the next one in. I'll quick close some of these pastes and put them back so that we can have room to work here. So that's always fun to do, is have colors that you can kind of swirl. It's a different technique. It's different than the ombre, where you pull everything through. Um, And everybody can do that swirling thing. All you have to do is put the colors that you think would mix nice together that won't make like a muddy mess. And then, or experiment with them. I, by all means, think that you can just grab a paper plate or a um, one of your you know, like a lunch size plate that you can make a palette out of it and then just go for it. Mix some colors together, see what you get. Mark down in your notebook what combinations you like to mix together and go from there. All right. All right, so the Stand Tall Giraffe completes these animals. So let me write um, on the back of the 
backing so that I know which one goes on what. Ah, there we go. Okay, we're going to fuzz it. Oh, wait, let me make sure we got the hangers up here so that we got it going the right way. This is the only one that goes vertically of the four animals that we're doing. The rest of them are all horizontal. Okay. Now we line it up. do research while you're doing um, any of the chalk things because you can see on images what other people have done and that I think helps a lot. All right so we're using again similar colors to what we used for the lion so we're doing some fawn. We're going to mix. We want to mix kind of an orangish brown for the body of the giraffe. Okay, because it's got those spots. And then the lighter area is where we want... Um, where the letters and the words are, are going to pull up that white and that's going to make it look cool. All right, so now a squeegee to swirl our mixture here. So now we just go through circular motion, going through the whole animal here. We kind of want it a little spotted and then bring that down some. And then the giraffe's feet kind of tend to look almost like they have socks on because they have that longer, lighter color going all the way up to their knee. Okay, I know that looks really splotchy, but it's going to look really cool when we pull that back. All right. And then I will tell you how we, what colors we used. And in the water that transfer goes so that we can use it again and again. So I have little 9 by 13 pans with some cold water in them. And that will take care of all of that. Okay. All right, so let me get these put away and then I'm going to pull all of those back in the view so you can see all of them that we did. We did a lion, a male lion. We did a buffalo bison, buffalo. We did the sperm whale and a giraffe. All right. So let's see those. Okay. So this one we just did. So it's a little bit wet still. We have our lion We have a buffalo, American buffalo, and then it's hard to show them all on camera. 
and then we have this whale here. So that's what those turned out like. Pretty cute. So you can hang these up in like a child's room or your library or somewhere in the house. They're cute. I'm putting them on my chocolate tour wall of fame. <laughs> but that was fun. That is a different technique, swirling the colors together. I tried to be as realistic as I could be. So let's put those off to the side and we'll grab our next project. So the next thing we're working on, I know I mentioned it the other day, from our, um, from the Chalk Couture, um, hold on, I'm losing my train of thought. All right, so our corner market collection, um, all the things are interchangeable and I haven't got to chalk this sheep, and I love it. Love it, love it. So, <laughs> so, so black sheep wool. I've got our big um, 18 by, no, this is 12 by 18 board. And um, the black sheep wool, quality dry goods, these little things. And this little since 1902, these came from the mercantile um, collection, or the mercantile of, from this collection. And this was by itself. The chickens I did the other day were by themselves. But there's a mercantile one. There's a grocery one. There's a whole bunch in the collection. Anyway, so we are going to put all these together. I grabbed those because I wanted to use them with this which is what these collections are meant to be. You're supposed to be able to kind of, you know, um, borrow from one to another. All right, so let's find out. Oh yeah, that's right. These Aiden boards, you can hang them either way. So there's no wrong side, right side. You can literally not do it upside down. It'll hang up just like it is. All right, so let's get some things laid out. Um, what happened to my, oh, there it is. White paste. Okay. All right, so we're gonna put black sheet wool up at the top. Let me see how how you are seeing this right now. Andy, are you seeing an up-to-date anything? Kind of, sort of. Are you seeing that I moved a different board? Good. Okay, good. All right, so we are gonna Kind of put these words up at the top, kind of close together because we're not going to have a whole lot of room. The sheep is really big. So just kind of. It's what? Okay, that's all right. I'm working at the top right now, so I think that's okay. All right, good, good, good. All right, I need, I need to slowly move that over there. All right, good. All right, so we're going to do this in steps so that we can get it all in. So let me give my bright white a good stir.
okay. Try not to get too much all over me. Piece of dog hair that sticks. There we go. Okay, let's use our small squeegee for this. You don't need a whole lot for these words, but we want to make sure we have at least enough to get across here. I don't know why I'm so like as like the sheep and the chickens are so aesthetically pleasing to me that I really am drawn to be doing this sheep. When I saw it in our catalog back in winter, um, I couldn't wait to get these done and have them on my wall. I guess I just am kind of an animal lover. So anything that can honor these animals that are so awesome. All right, so that is number one. Put that in the water, get that going. All right, let's quick dry this. Next, we're doing We just want this dry so if the transfer gets close to that word, like it lays up on here, it's not going to pull the chalk paste away. It's pretty good. Okay, now, this one. We're going to lint it up with our lint cloth. Every little bit of lint that you have on your transfer just helps when you're doing a layer of chalk paste close to another one, like I'm doing here. You just want to make sure it doesn't pull that other layer up. So, when you're satisfied with it, that looks pretty straight to me. Okay, then we're going to go in with chalk paste. I love the font change from this almost like newspaper font into, oh, I didn't mean to do that, into this script cursive font. Always have Clorox wipes right there. They're so helpful. Okay. Okay, that was two. All right, we got two down. Let's dry that. Next, we have these little, I don't know what you call them, they're like a little arrow or a little pointer. Put 
one there and I can get it peeled. We're going to put one on the other side next to the cube. figuring out where it's even. detail. Okay. We're taking those up. Stick them in the water. All right. And dry that. I'm going to move the board up. Next, our beautiful, beautiful black sheep. As soon as this is not warm from the dryer anymore, I'm going to put this down. You got to make sure that you don't want your board to be hot because this is a vinyl transfer and it'll kind of warp it. Heat will. Goodness gracious, I don't know if I can get an edge. That is funny. Okay, this sheet is keeping me. That is so funny. I don't think I've had this much trouble peeling it back. I don't want to like peel the paper. Oh, I got it. Sometimes these bigger transfers, it's easier to fuzz them face up like this. So I've got terry cloth side down against the sticky. Oops. Well, it's not as easy as it looks. to go in the wash to get chalk paste off of it. I keep dunking it in the chalk paste every time I'm using it, which happens. Okay. All right, let's flip this guy over. And we are going to buffer of this fuzz cloth over the words up here. 
so that this transfer can set against it like that. All right, so now I'm just smoothing out bubbles, making sure I'm flat against the board. And then on this end, Okay, now this, let's see, where my towel go? I'm gonna tuck this in here. It's wanting to stick to my frame and I don't want it to. So I'm just gonna fold it over this towel here and that will work. Next, I'm going to take washi tape because this area of the grass in between the sheep's hooves, I want to not put chalk paste. So I'm putting this across so I remember not to chalk right in there. And I'll, it'll make more sense when I get to that part why I did that once I peel it. Okay, I think we are good. We are ready to chalk the whole thing. All right, now this time, we're gonna want to load up our transfer because it's a big area to cover. So just remember when you're done, you're going to scrape off the excess. You can move that down into the next area. other area. Almost done with it. Okay. All right, so now the trick is some of my cloth. It's sticking really good. Okay, that worked. Now, take my washi tape off. I'm going to fold him non-sticky side and stick him right into So now we can, we have one more detail to add. We can move him up a little and we're going to dry with the dryer just in here where we're going to put this last detail.
now this last detail that I wanted to do. The reason I didn't do all the grass in here is because I wanted to put this in between. Is that straight? So Okay, since 1902, I don't know, does that look straight? Yeah, it does now. Okay. Get a little bit more white. You don't need a whole lot for this. The letters aren't that big, so it's not going to take that much paste. that is all there is to that. Okay. Last peel to reveal. Well, that turned out really nice. I'm so glad I finally got the sheep finished. He's adorable. I love it. All right, so I can put him right beside our chickens now. Well, that completes everything I wanted to get done today. So we did this big board with our corner market black sheep got him all finished. We also did the wild blue yonder. We did the Rome where you want to Buffalo. We did stand tall giraffe. And we did the Be Brave and Strong Lion. That hour, we got really busy and did some awesomeness right here. I love the way these turned out. I love this sheep on our Aiden board. Awesome. If you love this video, love it and share it with your friends. We can spread the news about chalk, chalkology, chalk a tour and how fun this is. I have an upcoming chalk night locally here on July 12th. It's a Friday from seven to nine. So if you have not seen the invite yet, um, look at it, go look at it. And if you can make it, come on out. Also, we are going to, if you are not a member of my VIP group yet, comment, add me so that I can add you to the group and um, like my page as well, that all of that helps my small little business and helps me and my family, um, in supporting small businesses, which I think is very important. So, and that is it for this, this for tonight. And I will see you here back at this time, nine o'clock tomorrow night. If all goes well, I will be here again. Thank you for watching my live. Bye for now.